Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over a product that Hyperkin recently announced called the Ultra Game Boy. Let's get started. So during CES, which is the Consumer Electronics Show, Hyperkin unveiled their new product, yet to be released and without a firm release date, called the Ultra Game Boy. So here's what we know so far about the Ultra Game Boy. First and foremost, it's called the Ultra Game Boy. Its target release date is summer of 2018, but there is no current firm date on that. Uh, it's going to cost approximately $100. They said under $100, which could really mean $99.99, but there is no price as of yet. Uh, it works with regular Game Boy games. A uh, six hour built-in battery, USB-C charging, stereo sound, and that includes left and right channels. There is a backlit screen, as you can see in this image, and it also is an aluminum case. And Hyperkin has received some criticism, namely, first and foremost, with the name. So they call it the Ultra Game Boy, which probably is not gonna stick. That's probably not the final name for this, considering how close it does resemble the Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, Nintendo is extremely protective of the property and calling something the Ultra Game Boy probably won't stick. You can also see in that image here that there is no branding yet on it besides the Hyperkin logo, so you can't even see Ultra Game Boy here, which means the name probably is not gonna stick. And the second form of criticism that they've been receiving is regarding the target release date. Because Hyperkin has a very horrible track record of not releasing things anywhere near to when they've been announced. And these aren't the only criticisms that the system is drawing, those are just the main ones that I've seen. And now I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the Ultra Game Boy. So I also agree that the Ultra Game Boy name probably is not gonna stick. Uh, it's way too similar to Nintendo's name. And I really think that they're probably gonna to have to rename this. Secondly, Retrobit's Super Retro Boy was put on hold due to Nintendo trademark issues. And if you don't believe me, check out the official tweet by Retrobit themselves. Retrobit puts Super Retro Boy on hold following Game Boy trademark renewal. So that's not the best news considering Ultra Game Boy is, I would say, considerably closer to a Game Boy than this Super Retro Boy. So here is the Super Retro Boy. You can see it's got 10 hours of gameplay. It has an LCD screen. It looks far less like a regular Game Boy than the Ultra Game Boy by Hyperkin. It has four buttons. This thing plays Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. The kicker on this, it's releasing for $79.99 whenever it comes out. <laughs> so, I'm not sure, hopefully they can figure out the treadmark issue and get this released. But in my opinion, on paper, the Super Retro Boy might be a better product. And that leads right into my next point. The price is fairly high in comparison to different options on the market. Now, while the Super Retro Boy isn't on the market, it's already being advertised at coming out at a lower price than the Ultra Game Boy. And if we look at what's currently on the market for people who are interested in Game Boy Gaming, we'll head over on to eBay, which is notoriously high in pricing for retro gaming products. The Game Boy Advance GBA game console with the AGS 101 backlit screen and switch. So this Game Boy Advance has custom shell, so it's non-official shell, uh, probably non-official buttons. It has the AGS 101, which may or may not be the official AGS 101 screen, but the internals are Nintendo Game Boy Advance internals. So at the very least, you get the official internals of the Game Boy Advance. This will play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games at a price of US $83.16. If 
we go even further here, the Game Boy Advance SP console with the AGS 101 backlit screen, and you can see all the funky cases. There is a Majora's Mask case I can see, there's a Donkey Kong case, a Mario case, a Naruto case. Again, these are not real official Nintendo cases, but the guts, maybe aside from the screen, are official Nintendo for $84.55. And if you want everything official, you can get a Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP Launch Edition. Uh, it comes with three games, three game cases, a charger, and it is US $30.38. And this kind of leads into my next point. Uh, based on my personal experiences, uh, this doesn't go for all of Hyperkin's controllers, but this goes for the ones that I've experienced. Uh, the controllers don't necessarily have the greatest buttons. And what I mean is the controllers that I've used, the buttons have felt a little mushy and the button responsiveness was not the greatest. And in a system like this, you can't swap out the controller. The controller is embedded into the system. So on a Hyperkin system, for example, some of them that they've released, for example, something that plays Super Nintendo games. If you don't like their first party controller, you can actually put in an official Super Nintendo controller. And with the system like this, you can't really do that. Like if you don't like the controls, you're kind of stuck. And that's not to say the controls are gonna be awful. I'm maybe giving them the benefit of the doubt here because the controls have to be good or else you know the system I'll, I'll just say this if the system can run the game that's one thing playing the games themselves is a completely different experience if you have a bad experience playing the games then the system really isn't worth anything my second last point here game boy color games the compatibility isn't certain they said maybe but they did not guarantee it at least not to my knowledge which would be potentially a very big miss. If this only plays Game Boy games and that's it, I think this product might be a miss. I will say it's neat. I will say that. The lit up screen, the fact that it's got an aluminum case, that is neat. So overall, I don't really like putting out negative videos. Um, I'm generally, trying to be very positive in my videos, uh, at least take an unbiased approach. Uh, but this is one of those systems that looks, it, it honestly looks like there are a few issues that need to be addressed. Maybe they announced it too early, uh, but personally, and again, these are just my opinions. I think that this might be a miss because of the lack of capabilities of this system if it just does Game Boy games at a price of $100. I mean, there's a ton of other options out there, um, official options, official Nintendo systems uh, that you can actually use and buy for cheaper. Uh, the Retrobit, Super Retro Boy, whenever that comes out, in my opinion, is a superior system for less money. It does more. So I hope when this thing comes out that I eat my words. I hope this is a good system. I hope that it comes out and it's a big success. So don't get me wrong there. I don't have it in for Hyperkin. I don't want them to fail. I really like the fact that they are coming out with new things for the retro gaming community. I don't want them to fail. I want them to succeed. I want to eat my words here. I want this thing to be good. I just have my reservations. And again, these are my own personal thoughts. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I'm really interested to see what everyone else thinks on this because I wanna see if I'm thinking along the same lines here. Maybe I'm way off base. I really hope I am. But please let me know what you think about the Ultra Game Boy in the comments below. Maybe I've missed something. Maybe I've said something wrong. I would really like to know. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.